Hi, uh, we're here with Adrian Gore this uh, this morning. Uh, thank you for your time and to tell us a little bit about um, your works in the group show uh, with Andrew Fay, uh, Hidden in Plain Sight. So thank you for being here. Hello, everyone, and uh, thank you, Nadine, for the wonderful introduction. Um, I had a great time with Andrew in preparing this exhibition. We are both figurative artists who create unique narratives out of symbols that surround us. So our narratives invite to question or show how we may relate to certain symbols from a subjective, but also from a critical perspective. So just to say a little bit about the main idea behind the show, the exhibition is entitled Hidden in Plain Sight. And this is because we exhibit paintings that connect to common Western objects and symbols of cultural authority in an unexpected subjective way. But what is interesting is that the subjective becomes objective in our works. For example, in my work, I connect shopping carts, drones, and uh, Greek, Roman, Western European statues to postmodern questions um, to postmodern theories by Boris Groys, Slavoj Zizek, just to name a few, that take a critical view of our consumerist capitalist culture. So the easiest way for me to explain how I work is that is to say that I treat my paintings and prints as academic projects. And what interests and concerns me is based on common social political issues that we all hear about on the news. And um, I believe that we are all determined by our, by our own cultural context in understanding and seeing the world and by our own psychological experiences. So my works comment on this aspect. I could comment here on the theoretical and historical aspects that inspire my work, but the main idea that I'm offering is that I'm making works to critically reflect on our society. My work is not, I don't see my work as beautiful because I do not work with the idea of beauty. Actually, I work against idealized images. I'm not making paintings for anybody to like. I would say that my works show a different, inversed way of seeing certain popular symbols that surround us uh, through critical narratives of the medieval devil. And maybe I can elaborate on this symbolic aspect of my work a little bit later. In the past, I was painting icons for the Christian Orthodox community. So, they were my patrons and and the subject matter of my works of my icons was pre-established based on sacred texts but as an artist i do not illustrate recognizable subject matters anymore so for this reason i understand that someone cannot see the same meaning in my works as i do and uh, therefore the title of this show hidden in plain sight if you go and see the works in the exhibition, you will also see that I make use of simpler, easier to read scenarios as people staying in line with shopping carts or posing on a pedestal. But my deeper meaning is allegorical and always driven by a biographical interest. Yeah, it's, uh, and, and your work is, is quite particular because the with the the style that you bring to your work is i think very very classical looking style and yet the meanings are sort of work throughout time and certainly bring very current ideas um but your actual handling and style is is so sort of very ornate and and very rich in in terms of of how you bring the the style and the look of your work mm -hmm. and um like your larger panel piece um uh would you tell us a little bit about that i know it's egg temper on on board um and 
and but it's it's incredible in terms of the colors and but the symbols again but all of the small details in the background when you get up close are just phenomenal yes so this is an egg tempera painting on a wooden panel and in making this painting i used the byzantine iconographic technique i made the panel from four long pieces of wood which I glued together with casein glue that I extracted from milk. I really followed the traditional methods in preparing a, an icon board. Then I carved a recessed area in the front of the panel, and then I added braces for support, like I do when I make Byzantine icons. The back of the panel includes harmonious color combinations, and the ancient Tetrachrom color palette. So I was inspired by the allegory of the cave uh, described by Plato. And this painting depicts the puppet showman before entering the cave, which is the black hole on the right side of the painting. And uh, this puppet showman enter Plato's cave to perform on a roadway before a fire in order to cast shadows on the back of the cave. So these shadows tell a group of prisoners who are trapped in there in, in the back of the cave um, what to believe uh, or what is normal, what is a normal way of thinking and seeing reality. So the painting visualizes this moment before entering this closed environment where the shadows are created and therefore where the ideology is created. So what I'm really highlighting in this painting is that unlike the prisoners, the puppet showmen are aware of both worlds, the inside and the outside of the cave. And it seems to me that nobody thought of this possibility. I mean, those who commented on the influence of this allegory of the cave on Western visual culture. As you can see, Plato's head and legs are painted in black in the foreground. The painting also visualizes how the landscape would look outside the cave. And here I had a lot of fun painting and imagining how a pure landscape would look like. For this reason, I made the landscape out of uh, prehistorical symbols that we know of from cave paintings and ceramics. Um, more specifically, I used symbols from Kukuten civilization, uh, which is a, a Neolithic culture from Eastern Europe. So I wanted to represent the idea of purity that Plato is talking about using symbols that were once not spoiled by the Western thought. And to comment on the style of the painting, yes, I'm reusing medieval Byzantine and Western academic methods of painting to be able to create this kind of narratives, because I found that it is very difficult to visualize an allegory like this, we're using, for instance, abstract or minim minimalist methods of making art, as they remove the content of a work of art, so they remove the symbols. And for this reason, I find that the classical and Byzantine look uh, gives me the right uh, expressive tools. So, for example, the landscape is painted by using the Byzantine technique of painting icons, which starts from a base, pure color, untouched by shadows, metaphorically speaking, towards highlights and wide contour lines. And this is the Byzantine iconographic way of, uh, to visualize the visible world as transformed by uncreated light. And um, for this reason, I find that it is the best way to visualize Plato's idea of a pure landscape that is outside the cave. And because it's connected with this idea of true light that Plato is talking about. And 
The human figure is also very important in my painting, as I find that figurative painting works best in portraying and commenting on how human nature is shaped by various forms of ideology. And um, there's a lot of uh, the repetition of uh, the symbols that you use in the, as well as in your, the prints that, that are in the show. I, the, like you said, the shopping cart, it's almost like sort of a, a, a vocabulary that, that you bring back visually in in your works in uh, how you're touching on things um do you use your prints in a different way in terms of what you present the style is very similar um mm -hmm. but there's color and the light is very different in in your your lino cuts uh that are just exquisite the amount of detail is is just um just wonderful um and how would you how do you how do you use that with the repetition and and the printmaking i treat my prints in the same way i engage with my paintings uh what i like about printmaking is the, the specific way of engaging with materiality to create an image and this physical effort is really important for me in understanding more complex ideas so the technique itself helps me to visualize what's going on in my mind. And I really like what you said about uh, the use of symbols to create a visual vocabulary in making prints and paintings. Uh, my artistic intention is to mirror the world that I perceive through my own life experience and through the contemporary theoretical perspectives that I encounter. And it is important to elaborate here on the conceptual framework in which I work with these symbols. In my work, a symbol is a shape that can also be represented three-dimensionally that stands for something else like a material object, like a shopping cart or a drone or something abstract, a, a critical way of seeing that I encounter in my readings as the critique of capitalism and consumerism. In my work, I differentiate between symbols that mislead, that do not show a clear meaning, like uh, the shadows in Plato's cave, and symbols that show a clear path, like the traffic signs, for instance. Traffic signs are directional, and it's good to follow these signs if you want to arrive at a particular location, or metaphorically speaking, at a particular meaning. So I work with symbols that act as signs that have a clear direction and symbols that mislead now it is up to my viewers to decide what kind of symbols are the shopping carts drones or whatever symbols i may be using in my own work uh, my viewers are the decision makers here as they have to decide if my work has uh, something hidden or if the symbols that I use connect to the contemporary context in which we all live in a certain manner. Most likely, my narratives may confuse and possibly may trigger some questions. And I hope in this process, you will see something different about the world in which we live. For example, in this print entitled Netherfaced, I employ the medieval semiotic of inversion which was uh, very popular in Christian medieval iconography. Netherfaced refers to a person who has his head or mind relocated. So this medieval sign of inversion was portrayed as a demonic disfigured human body by inversing the body parts. And more specifically, the, the humanoid uh, devil possesses uh, a face or a head in place of its genitals or belly. So this demonic body exists as a sign of the twisted upside down mentality. Uh, the devil is exemplary of disintegration, fragmentation, absurdity, antithesis, and exaggeration. So all these abstract concepts boil down to both literal and figural or figurative sense of inversion. Therefore, I use this aesthetic power and value of such a medieval symbol 
to portray in this print a person whose head or mind is relocated and how ideology distorts our ideas about reality through the semiotic of inversion. And this symbol of inversion repeats in my work, in both my prints and paintings. The work definitely on, on, on both sides with Andrew's and, and your work certainly seems to be throwing out questions or asking people to think about what the artwork might be saying like the the aesthetic the they're aesthetically absolutely stunning and yet they really draw you into the smaller nuances of what they're saying and and even if you don't get everything exactly it draws you into thinking about what it's saying and and it, it really it encourages you to to think critically um i find the the work is is makes you wonder so why is this here and why is this like this because like you said it, it is sort of topsy-turvy but you really get drawn into it so it, it's it really is immediately asking you to sort of think for yourself to to sort of um mm -hmm. examine uh what the work might be saying which i find wonderful like it's it's not uh you can't sort of really glance over the work they really just draw you in and and you see that there's a questioning there it, there's so much to to see in in the pieces and uh so um just to wrap up the works are available to see online um and we'll be posting it through social media but again uh the the digital versions just don't do it justice so as soon as the doors are open and we get the word out um i hope people really do come out and see them it, it makes a really big difference to see them in person um so we'll let people know as soon as the doors are open to see this amazing work really thank you nadine <laughs> thank you